joining us now is the president of the Canadian Personal Chef Association, Mia Andrews, who is also the founder of Manja. I love the name. Welcome. Thank you for that intro song. That was perfect. (laughs) Manja. So tell us about Manja and how it works. Well, um, Manja is a way to bring personal chefs to more people who need them. And I need them. Yeah. <laughs> Do we really need them or is it just that our lives are busy and it's convenient and easier? Yeah. Well, let me talk about that convenience for a little bit because um, we don't have a convenience culture because we're lazy. I really believe that. Um, it's because we're working really hard and we're mm-hmm. commuting long hours and mm-hmm. we've got lots of challenges. So I think that whole you know culture of convenience that has led us to not cooking – or not having the time to cook, is really born out of the necessity to find more time in our lives. And that's where personal chefs come in. Personal chefs are one of the best kept secrets for people who save time and eat well, because um, what we do is we help our clients uh, save time in the week that they can spend on other things, because we do the shopping, the menu planning, the cooking, and everything. Um, But it's combined with the eat well, which is important, because there's lots of ways to save time and get food, but... um, it's not always about eating well. So we bring the two of them together. We can accommodate special diets. We can make sure that people have healthy, nutritious meals, um, lower in fat, higher in nutrition. And so where those two intersect, the saving time and the eating well, is this world called Personal Chefs. And Manja is now a new website where people can easily find and hire a personal chef. And from what I understand, the process is fascinating. You, you input a budget... And then I guess you input what you like to eat, and then somebody gets back to you. That's pretty much the way it's always worked with Personal Chef. You tell us what you want, and we do it. <laughs> but usually, it, I, I did, usually I thought it, the way it worked was you tell people what you want, and then they tell you how much it's going to cost. This way, you can tailor it financially, too. We always, always want to know what the budget of the client is, because some people just want, you know, they want chicken and vegetables and basic stuff, and that's great. Um, Other people want, like, really high-end food, and that's great, too. So part of being a personal chef is developing a relationship with a client, really getting to know them, not just the budget, but also you know, their family's lifestyle, what their kids like to eat, um, what their food allergies are. So budget is definitely a big part of that as well. So how, I mean, if I'm a a busy working spouse, I won't say, you know, wife or husband, you're both Mm -hmm. working, you're both there. I mean, the question I hate most when I walk in the door is what's for dinner? It's like, you got home first. I don't know. What did you make? (laughs) Right. So, I mean, when you're talking expense, if for just a, a family in that kind of time crunch, maybe two or three meals a week. Would you consider it something that's affordable for the majority of people? So I'll go back to some clients that have told me that they actually started saving money by hiring me when when I was cooking for them. Um, because number one, they weren't going grocery shopping and spending all that time. And right. their time, time is, is worth money. money. Okay, yeah. like we're talking, you know, in this case, it was a lawyer. So Mm-hmm. Every hour that so I was, was saving him was, <laughs> that was a lot of money. Um, but he also told me he wasn't thro- throwing the goo out of the bottom of the fridge every Friday. And, True. You know, there's studies that show that hundreds and hundreds of dollars of groceries go wasted every year. So, Well, I will attest to that because yeah. I'm on my own and it, I go and grocery shop and I, I, A, don't want to spend the time to cook a whole meal for one person. And then I have leftovers. And I have to eat it all week. Or I don't get there because something comes up for work or, or somebody says, why don't we meet for a bite? And, and you're right. I throw half of it away. And, ag- and again, it's not because you're lazy. <laughs> um, that whole what's for dinner thing, when you stand in front of the fridge and you open it and the fridge is full of food. There's lots of stuff to eat, but you're tired. You've worked hard. You've maybe no been in traffic for yeah. two years. So uh, two, two years. years. Yeah. It feels, it feels like, like that. It feels I tell like you. It. <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, so that's we're the what's for dinner solution providers. Exactly. I think dinner is one of those. At the end of a day, you've solved everybody's problems: your children's, your husband's, your bosses, your coworkers, whatever. Suddenly, now you're supposed to open that fridge, and now come up with a creation. And it's sort of, I don't want to. I just want to (laughs) eat. I think a lot of people just are done. And meanwhile, I've got 10 minutes and I have to get two of them to soccer. Right. How do I do that? And the right. And going back to that whole culture thing, because we've been eating convenience for so many years now, we are at a point where people don't know how to cook. 
anymore. Um, the last generation that really knew how to cook was my grandmother. I mean, my mother knew how to cook from her mother, but she didn't really teach me because she was busy working. And really? now there's generations okay, that yeah. just don't pull I it together. Know, I completely disagree with you. So I might I. agree with you on this and this, but the millennials my, and my kids, all they do is they grow up watching the cooking shows. They don't know what a cookbook is. They Google a recipe. Yep. And they are cooking. Um, Alex's boyfriend Zach, they were on the show. It's amazing. It's like, please take over my kitchen every night, please. <laughs> Wait till they start working yeah. forty hours a week and commuting fifteen hours. But a I week, think though. they're no. I yeah. think Kate's right in that yeah. extent that they are foodies. Yeah. Uh, I have sons, and I would never think. But when they stay with me, they criticize my cooking. <laughs> and tell me, no, no, put a little bit of this and You're put surprised. a little bit of that. <laughs> are they criticizing or are they helping? You? They're rebelling. No, they're, they're just... rebelling against the convenience yeah. generation. That's <laughs> awesome. I love it. Yeah, they want everything fresh and they a little That's bit of true. this and a little bit of that. Yes. And there's not enough flavor there. I, so and there's, there's a big dissonance right now between what people want. People do want organic, fresh, local. They do want that kind of stuff. And but variety. Where did, and variety. But where do they get it? Because the, the industry that provides that convenience. Food isn't really catching up enough to yeah. what the family needs. I think what's happening, though, is for millennials, when they are doing the 80-hour work week, they'll eat junk mm -hmm. some days, and then when they have the time, they will cook that fabulous meal. Right. So that's mm -hmm. where we come in. We provide the meals during the rest of the week so they don't have to eat the junk. And you also do something that I want you to tell us about, and that's the cottage hamper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, you know, what do you cook at the cottage? Your standard barbecue, hamburgers and hot dogs. But, you know, sometimes people want to change it up a bit. Or maybe you have food allergies or special diet considerations. And if you don't have all the facilities at home up in the cottage, mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's hard to accommodate that. So the food hamper is something that personal chefs can put together. People can pick up on the way to the cottage or have the personal chef drop it off to them. And it can give them the whole meals for the weekend. It's particularly great if you have people staying at the cottage who are guests. Mm -hmm. people yeah. Who, who are your friends during the summer. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I just didn't know that there was an availability of personal chefs. I know that there are meal delivery programs. So what makes this different? So personal chefs have been around for a long time. I started the association back in 2000. But um, as I said, it's one of the best kept secrets. And that's why Manja is coming along to put it out on the internet to make people um, easy to find mm -hmm. and uh, easy to engage with a personal chef. So basically, you have a choice of chefs as you opposed to just trying to find one somewhere. And that's been the hard part, right? Like you, you might hear about a personal chef. How do you find one? You know, you can Google internet, you go looking at all their websites, call me, you still have to interview a bunch of chefs. So what we're doing is we're putting all of that on Manja. So um, we do all of that work for the client. The client just put, tells us what they need. Then the chefs will bid back and um, tell the clients a little bit about themselves, start to develop that relationship. The client picks one that they like, they ch can chat back and forth and um, that's it. And so they cook the food and just drop it off? So um, personal chefs can either cook in people's homes. Some of them can cook um, in commercial kitchens and deliver. And um, they can go to an event site. So if you're having a wedding or an office party, they can go there. Um, we're very, very flexible that way. All right. So the, the, the website is it's M -A -N -J -Y -A, Correct. M-A-N-J-Y-A, manja.ca. Correct. Right. And all the information is on is on the site and yes. you've got how many chefs are you representing now is that the right terminology we have um about 50 on the site currently 50. we're just launching wow. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. our goal is to have yeah, about 300 by this time next year because we think that there's lots of demand for them and so where uh, are you centered is it the gta we're launching in the gta and and the region mm -hmm. then we're moving into ottawa through to niagara and then We'll move across Canada, and then we'll take over the world. Take over the world? <laughs> Are you going to poutine land in Quebec? <laughs> Crepes uh, and poutine, that's all I would want there. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But. Well, thank you very much for coming in and telling us all about manja and bringing us snacks. We like snacks. Yes, I hope you enjoy them. This is a dilled lemon and lentil salad. Mm -hmm. The recipe is on the manja site. And that's some 
banana bread that I baked while I was drinking my coffee this morning. So. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's what it. I do while yeah. I'm drinking my coffee in the morning. Exactly. Thank you so much for coming in. After the break, music guru Eric Alper is going on the record to chat with us about the legacy of the Tragically Hip playing their last concert tour. This is what she said on the Jewel Radio Network. We'll be right back.